So this is the extract from the old story, the story of Pizarro himself, his first encounter with the Inca. Francisco Pizarro was tired from days of marching over the Cordillera before arriving in the Lush Valley. Like in Tumbes, the natives had obligingly vanished from their city. Caxamalca, giving his paltry band of 177 men the run of the place. He stood in the Plaza de Armas beside his lieutenant, De Soto, and his brother, Hernando, squinting against the occasional glint from the chain mail of his men who were hiding strategically around the plaza and waiting for him to drop his handkerchief. Pathetically outnumbered, surprise was their only advantage. And guns. They had attended mass that morning, and the men had been given an extra large breakfast. Now they longed to kill. And now Atahualpa, king of the Inca, and his entourage were outside the gates of Caxamalca, invited to dinner by the Spaniards. The Inca were colorful in tunics of white and red. The vanguard swept the path in front of their ruler and his party with large tree branches. Three battalions followed from among the tens of thousands of troops encamped outside the city, littering the plain. They stood tall, signifying noble birth, and their breastplates and helmets glinted casting Francisco's troops' telltale signs into shadow. There were five, perhaps six thousand Inca in the square as the sun began to go over the city's ramparts. The press of humanity parted and Atahualpa appeared on a throne borne upon a litter with the magnificent plumes of his diadem fanning the air around him. His haughty manner demanded privilege and obeisance as his birthright. His men bowed their heads in his presence and he squinted quizzically at these white men who merely stared him down. Fray Vicente, who had conducted mass that morning, stepped between the Inca and the Spaniards, and with raised cross in one hand and a Bible in the other, said, It is God's will that you be the friend of our commander. Atahualpa shot back through his interpreter. Your men have mistreated us. You have stolen from our storehouses. Vicente protested at this affront stamping his foot in the dusty square, going so far as to say, you will submit to the authority of the king of Spain, become a Christian, and abandon your idolatry of the sun that sinks each day, unlike our God in heaven. I will never be a Christian, was the translated reply. Your master may be my friend, and we accept his offer of hospitality, but I will never give up my God. Atahualpa inclined his head towards the setting sun. Francisco seized his opportunity while the priest and king were locked in ideological debate. Pulling his tunic around him and drawing his sword, he ran across the square, waving his handkerchief. Arriving at the Inca's litter, he pulled the startled king off his perch and yelled, Santiago, the code for shoot at will. The plaza exploded in gunfire, coming from all directions, picking off the Inca like dazed ducks. Pausing to reload was the only determinant of how many died, how fast. All the while, Francisco held on to his prize hostage, who was not as strong as his royal bluster had projected. The Spanish cavalry emerged in the wake of their guns, slashing left and right, yelling, spilling blood that flew across the square as heads parted bodies and rolled in the dust. 
The trapped Inca tried to retreat to the gate which had closed behind them. The surprise was total. The nobles in Atahualpa's entourage made one brave attempt to surround their leader and fend off the Spaniards, but they too were mowed down relentlessly by the pressing cavalry. The square fell quiet as the life of the Inca was taken out of it. The groans of the dying were relentlessly extinguished by slashing sabers or a fired gun or a horse hoof grinding down on bone. newspaper and general interest magazine journalist, author and poet Lorraine D. also co-hosts the Ultimate Movies broadcast. A long-time fan of the Bard, she'll be reading her in the style of Shakespeare poem, Strategy, the Swagger Dance of Politics. Copyright 2002, Lorraine Crystal Dimitrovic. We'll join Lorraine now as she takes us back to battlefield politics, unchanged since the days of yore. I'd like to read my poem to you today. It's called Strategy, the Swagger Dance of Politics, by me, Lorraine Crystal Dimitrovic, copyright 2002. Strategy, the Swagger Dance of Politics. Chess piece profits, made for bulk mail politics, marching to regents who lorded over lunchbox souls and flypaper masks, takers ravenous for the game, riding limos before cake eaters, like magpies flitting in mock runic towers, Cheaper than bread, whisper queens, feasting on smallest bones. Chess piece prophets sing anthems for aid, readily replaced, cheering for naivety as paladin youth enters play. It's sacrifice time again, defying commands of yore, for freedom, freedom, fist pounders insist about the mise en scene. Dynastic songs raise one regime today, one more yet tomorrow. Virgin odes better than any other northeast, west, and south. Single and the same flags, frolicking in ancient battlefields with primal cords and flailed swords, filled to empty vociferous pockets of gamut diversity. Play it again, the dictator of current fashion hums. Ho, skip now, pass the buck, and play it again. Pass the bill, skip, skip, tax, 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 and skip again. Ring to tilt the till, and play, play. Winners fed by losers, diamonds born of coal. Skip to the loo, flush all hearts. Oh, play on. Until final moves, until masses wall and howl for blood. No castles topple, blindly balloting promise parties into power. Checkmates renewed, the game is on again. Saddled up under new lying teeth, the night's away, capering at sunrise, bent wild for spoils. By sunset, a sapling puppet's crown gleams again. So we scuff our toes and pray some more. On futile knees, a boomerang score. But no pawns appeased, when voices all and no ear, beneath smiling queens who walnut palm our dreams, nor no bold king's turret, while we electrify shanties and ring charity, is built long forever, on business sleights of hand, on solitary squares. Each company man for himself, blinks politics by magic, in the maze of blood red black, towing party lines and licking up footstools on a checkered board strategy where chess piece profits remain, remain, and just remain. Lorraine and I are glad that you joined us wherever you were listening from in the world, and we hope you enjoyed our show. The Ultimate Movies Broadcast Show will be back next month with more to discover about the marvelous world of film. Goodbye for now. See you then.